The start of my senior year was tough. I was preparing to go on a missions trip to India, but seven days before my departure, I became extremely sick and had an emergency appendectomy. At the same time, I went through a nasty breakup. The relationship was toxic and mentally abusive and emotionally abusive. A few weeks after that, my women's golf team was canceled and I was placed on the men's team. Even though the boys on my team treated me like a princess, my opponents were extremely offended that they had to play against a girl and weren't afraid to tell me that I was worthless and a waste of their time. They especially didn't like it when I beat them. <laughs> but all that negativity drowned out the joy of my success. By the first day of school, I was deep in a pit of depression and hatred towards myself. No one knew I was hurting so much, and no one could tell that I was dying on the inside. After five months, I finally told my parents what was happening, and I asked them for help. A counselor helped me recognize God's unfailing love for me. I've become so strong in my faith by overcoming the internal obstacles I've faced. Through the painful process of 2015, FCA helped me a lot. It provided healthy challenges for me, and it still does. It's a great reminder in the morning, even though it's early, to live my day completely devoted to Christ. I love doing random acts of kindness for people. Even though I was hurting, I would always bake treats for my golf team, and I like to post encouraging sticky notes on lockers. And I've also taped money to the pot machines with, treat, with a note that says, treat yourself to a drink. Now that I've gone through the greatest trials of my life up to this point, I'm so excited to go to Cedarville University to major in early childhood education so I can become a light in the classroom like Tammy Klum and Kelly Pritchard have been to me. When I was eight, I witnessed my older sister going into anaphylactic shock from an allergic reaction to a peanut. Two years later, I was still thinking about her experience and I thought that since it happened to her, it must happen to me. Then that thought turned into, if that does not happen to me, then something else terrible will. I was so scared to eat food because I thought I was allergic to everything. Every single day, my mom would drop me off at school and I would be bawling my eyes out in the van because I was so scared of what might happen that day. Every minute of every day, I was afraid. The worst part was at night. I would wake up in the middle of the night, screaming and crying. I was not in control of my life. This fear had taken over and after years of constant anxiety, I got mad. I was so sick of being afraid. Finally, one day, I sat down and cried out to God telling him to just take this away because I didn't want to live like that anymore. I began doing my devotions every day. I would really talk to God and see what he wanted me to do with my life. The fear did not just go away right away. It took a lot of time and patience, but I believe going through that time in my life has made me closer with God. I don't think I would ever be this passionate about God without that time in my life. I'm going to Capital University to play golf in the fall, and I want to start an FCA there. FCA has made a great impact on me and my school, and it gives me motivation every week when I hear people speak about Jesus. I want to be a nurse specializing in oncology. I love helping people, and by being a nurse, I will be able to share God's love each and every day. I grew up in a Christian home and never strayed from Jesus. I feel like God has given me everything I ask for, um, from sports to academics to food to clothing and to great parents. I've always had a family and parents to look up to, and I've always known Jesus. I used to hear other people's testimonies, and I won't lie, I used to get a little jealous of them. Uh, to me, my life was really boring and dull, uh, but as I grow in Him, I realize more and more that you don't have to hit rock bottom in order to get back to Jesus. The beauty of our relationship with the Trinity is that they are there at all times, never leaving, never changing. I've always learned that you must be willing to sacrifice everything in order to truly surrender to God. FCA has been such an encouragement to me. When I think I'm alone in my faith and no one thinks like me, I meet someone new through FCA, and all of a sudden I don't feel alone anymore. On the basketball court, it's important to me to be a good sport, as my grandma says, to be the fragrance of Christ. Off the court, the same is true. Christian leadership is about service. Jesus washed people's feet. Leaders must stand behind their followers, not in front. Although my major is undecided, the one that I, thing that I am sure about is that I will be a missionary at some point in my life. I'm a three-sport athlete. My best events are in the field portion of track and field, but I want to share about my senior cross-country season. I always brought up the caboose in the races. I never worried about my ranking because I was in it to stay fit, have fun, and encourage my teammates. It has always been one, it has always been one senior's job to lead the team in prayer before a meet. My team chose me for this honor. So before the race began, I proudly led our team in prayer. However, I had one requirement. 
I wanted everyone close together and interlocking fingers, unity, because we began and finished every race together. Even though my running career ended at the MAC meet, I was asked to ride the bus with the runners moving on in tournament to be able to continue leading the role, leading the role of our team prayer. That made me feel like I had won the whole race. This past Christmas season, I asked our FCA advisor if we could organize a sock drive for a Lima shelter. Deuteronomy 15.11, it says, you shall open wide your hand to your brother, to the needy and the poor, and in your land. The New Bremen FCA huddle collected and donated more than 900 pairs of socks to fulfill that calling. I will be attending Indiana Wesleyan to study nursing. What a perfect job to share the love and faith with others needing hope and support. I have always been a lead by example kind of athlete. I love putting in the extra work, whether it's extra time in the gym, lifting weights, or just getting enough sleep to keep my body healthy. Unfortunately, athletics were taken away from me most of this year when I tore my ACL at the start of volleyball season. Although this injury has been difficult, it has led me closer to God. It has helped me to dig deeper in my faith. I have been forced to change my role and now lead and encourage from the sidelines. I have br branched out not only leading our high school huddle at Lincoln View, but also spending my study hall on Fridays leading the junior high huddle. I love planning the lesson for them and connecting with them through games and activities. I will attend Calvin College in the fall where I plan to pursue a master's degree in speech and language pathology so that I can help make a difference in the lives of children. The school setting will give me an opportunity to coach and share my faith through an FCA huddle. I look forward to engaging athletes to grow in their faith and sport. When I was 14, my family and I switched churches. Through the transition, I struggled with my faith because I had been used to a very small church surrounded by people I grew up with. I was forced out of my comfort zone and that's the first time I questioned my faith. But after I became accustomed to the new church and met people, I learned what true Christianity meant. I learned to love your neighbor and to reach out to people more. Through FCA, I have had the chance to share my love for God with my classmates. I lead the devotions for our huddle and I'm able to tell them about my faith and the struggles that I go through. Everyone can share prayer requests and we all talk about how we show God's love in a sport or activity. By developing a personal relationship with each member, they are more talkative and open during discussions. They feel more comfortable and we, are, and we all share what we are going through. I will be playing tennis at the University of Finley and majoring in physical therapy. During my career, I have had many injuries and I believe that I will have many opportunities to share my faith with athletes when they are injured and they need a change in their life. God has always been important to me. That is a completely truth-filled statement. I was saved by age three, regularly attended church, grew up in a Christian home with a Sunday school teacher for our mom, baptized at age 11, listened to nothing but Christian music, and memorized Bible verses like no one's business. I knew so much about God, but that was as far as it went. Freshman year, I started a new school, Perry, and I was grateful for the change. Middle school had been rough, but freshman year, I lost who I was. I conformed to what my friends, boyfriend, and peers wanted from me. Then, on Mother's Day 2013, we received the news that my grandmother had been diagnosed with aggressive sarcoma cancer and she only had four to six weeks to live. I can't tell you how many empty prayers came out of my mouth. I didn't go to church, or if I did, I didn't want to. I just wanted my grandma and lost myself even more in the grieving process. God took her to heaven June 18th. My church family at Lima First Assembly of God gave me refuge in a loving church family where I could encounter God in a real and tangible way. In junior year, I saw opportunities arise to start FCA at Perry. I took a mission trip to Peru and came back newly baptized and this changed things for me at FCA. I was able to freely share encouraging words with my huddle. It was re refreshing and absolutely no accident that God gave me things to say, specifically to my spirit and every message that I have given at Perry. I'm going to write a state in the fall for nursing. I want to be completely involved in FCA there and I have and have other opportunities to fellowship with believers and non-believers. When I was five years old, I started to notice that our family was drastically changing. My parents were having a hard time in their marriage and it was breaking the whole family apart. My parents were getting divorced and my brothers and I felt at fault. My mom remarried and my stepdad was a pastor, but I started to lose my faith in God and question what I was really doing in my life. I started to become a bully and a jerk to everyone who was just trying to do the cool thing. Then I started going back to my uncle's church on Sundays and it changed my whole life. It was like God was telling my uncle exactly what to say and it was directed right towards me. I felt at peace with my life and was excited to see what was next. This change was still pretty hard for me. Most of all, I was scared to leave the only friends I had. Eventually though, I stopped hanging out with that group and looked for new friends. This was hard because I felt like everyone was turning on me and I had no one in my life. I decided to try Walpox FCA. I was very nervous but the first time I went, but I knew that I was never not going to go again. 
FCA was very vital to the foundation of my faith because it allowed me to look at problems in areas of my life that I and other students struggled with. As my faith grew in my last two years of high school, a dream of mine became a reality and I was being recruited to play college football. I asked God just to where he showed me where he wanted me to go and the best place for me to serve him. The very night I surrendered that decision to God. I got, a, I got a call from a coach, but it wasn't for football. It was to run track at Indiana Wesleyan. On my visit, I finally felt at peace with where God wanted me to serve him. I was raised in Texas until I was seven when my parents split up. My father had always been a drinker, but it got to the point where he stopped providing for us and was emotionally abusing my mother. When I was 11, I prayed a prayer and remember being genuine but I didn't really know what it meant to have a relationship with Christ. My junior year was the roughest I remember having, but God taught me so much and showed me a lot of His goodness. This was also the year I started leading FCA after it started at Lima Senior the year before. I absolutely love having the body gather in a school that so desperately needs Christ. I had never considered myself a leader or even wanted to lead, but as I learned more of God's Word, I learned how much the Gospel causes to be leaders. My dream job is to be a military chaplain, but if it's not the Lord's will for me, so be it. I just want to be obedient to God, teach truth, and love well. Growing up in my family, we always went to church every Sunday and we typically prayed before every meal. As I entered into high school and played soccer with the varsity girls, I began to become friends with the seniors and did what they did, which included going to parties, getting drunk, getting high, and then once soccer was over, we just all drifted our separate ways. And then I became depressed and just didn't really enjoy my life. But my brother happened to invite me to a Teens for Christ Shawnee meeting. When I went there, I was just overwhelmed with the love by the people there, and then I just rededicated my life to Christ. And ever since then, I've just never been the same. FCA has had a huge impact on my, my life by meeting other Christians, some of the most godly people I know I've met through FCA. I can honestly say I wouldn't be where I am in my walk with Christ if it has not been for the friends I've made through FCA. This past fall, we happened to lose a student at Shawnee High School to suicide. In becoming close with him, knowing his heart, I've made it to my, my goal to help hurting people. I plan on going to social work, which gives me a wide spectrum of possibilities, whether it is through schools or homeless shelters, and some other areas where I can serve and encourage others. Even though I grew up going to church, I didn't always act like a Christian. I was the kid that the teachers dreaded to have in their classroom. I thought I was so cool walking around like I was better than everyone else. Then Jesus came into my life and hit me like a bus. After we started attending Only Believe Ministries in Bakken's, I was definitely humbled. I found Jesus and learned what it truly means to pick up your cross daily and follow Christ. My first year of high school was very tough. I went to school every day knowing I was going to be persecuted for my beliefs. I was told on a daily basis that I was going to hell. I had suicidal thoughts running through my mind every day and I wondered why God was putting so much weight on my shoulders. Then there was an announcement during lunch one day and I wasn't really listening until I heard the word Christian. I asked the kid next to me, hey, what was that about? And he replied, something about Christian athletes. I went to the meeting, walked in, and distinctly remembered my football coach and principal, Tim Goodwin, saying, Sweeterman, glad to have you here. I signed up as a freshman along with two sophomores for a meeting in March, and for the first time in a long time, I had a smile on my face. That meeting that I helped lead in March helped change me. I figured out what my calling was and what God had put me on this earth to do. Now three years later, I love to spread his word to anyone who will listen, especially the kids in my school. After I graduate from college, I hopefully I can land a job as a middle school teacher where I can start an FCA group and feel like because of how I was at that age, it would be beneficial to help the kids get started earlier in their life on their path to follow Jesus Christ.